Hello, 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 it is Millerboy here. Okay, guys, it is finally here, part five. Okay, okay, I know it's been quite some time between this and part four, but please don't hold a grudge. It's here now, so let's get back to modding. Okay, so to recap what happened in part four, we basically, we did all the scripting, everything was working fine, but there was just a few little bugs here and there. So you guessed it, that's what we're going to fix today. So the first bug was that after we accepted the quest, we could kill Billy Bob, which would mess a few things up. The second bug was that we could go and pickpocket the item that the enemy stole instead of killing them, which would also mess things up. The third bug, we could go and kill the bad guy before we even accepted the quest, and that would mess things up very badly. And then the final bug we're going to fix today is that the player could just be very silly and just lose that item that they got back from the enemy, and then they could never complete the quest. So let's get started with number one. How can we solve the problem of if we kill Billy Bob after accepting the quest, but before we complete it? We'll, we'll do what most Skyrim quests normally do. We'll make the quest fail. So how do we do that? Well, you want to go and find your quest. So let me search for it here. MOD, let me scroll down. And go and open your quest up. Once it's open, what we need to do is we need to add a failed stage. Because if you remember, when we added a completed stage, which was 40... We had to tick this little box that said complete quest. And underneath you'll see one that says fail quest. So that's why we need to add another stage for our failed stage. Right click, new, and add another. So you know this can be any number, but just for today I'm going to put 100. And I like to do that with a failed stage because it makes it stand out. So click that, and then click onto it. So right click and add a new log entry like you always do. So I'm just going to put something like, you have failed... Ah ha ha ha, Ruffle, LMAO, PMSL, all that, oh, I didn't even do it right, come on Tom, exclamation mark, all that lovely f stuff. So, now like I said before, you need to tick the box that says fail quest, because that will turn this stage into a failed stage. So tick it, that's not in the dictionary, oh yeah it is, come on, I just put it in there, ignore, 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 there we go. Uh, so, tick the box, and click OK. So you're probably thinking, there we go, that's our first bug solved. Well, no, because we've got a failed stage, but the quest doesn't know when to go to that failed stage. It doesn't know when Billy Bob's died. So what we need to do is we add a need, we, bleh, sorry, we need to add a little bit of code onto Billy Bob. So go and open up Billy Bob, or whatever your main character is called. Once you're open, you want to go and add a script. So you know you can either right click add script, or you can click the add button here. Once the little window's popped up, you click New Script and give it a name. So, like always, I'm just going to go with my generic uh, ID, Mod Billy Code. Go ahead and click OK. Give it a second. There we go. So, remember, we need to add properties. And what is that property? I hope you can remember. I believe it was Quest. There it is. So, click that. And remember, if you put your name the same as your Quest, then it will automatically select it in the next drop down little bar in a moment. If we click here, yep, look, it's already picked our quest for us. If it's not, you know, you can just search down for your quest. So click OK, and there you go, that's our property added. So right click the script now, and click Edit Source. So we're going to add a little bit of code here. So leave a line, and copy what I write. I'll explain it all in a moment. But basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to add an on death event. So if you remember when we added this onto the enemy, we're simply adding this we're simply adding this so we can uh, detect when Billy Bob dies and send a little message to the quest um, to make it fail, basically. So, this may look a little bit strange now, but I'll explain it all a bit more thoroughly in one moment. So, remember to use the, um, the correct property ID. And you remember this, set stage, hopefully. Remember, we need to end our if statements, and then we need to end our events. So, basically, what I've done here, guys, is I've looked for the event on death. So, when Billy Bob dies, I want it to run some code. And the code I want it to run is if, so you know an if statement, that is, if something happens, I want you to do this. So, what I've put here, if the quest is, now, can you see this explanation mark at the beginning? That basically means the opposite, or not. So, if... The quest is not completed then I want you to set the stage to 100 when Billy Bob's dead 
because we don't want it failing the quest if we kill Billy Bob after we completed it, because that would just mess things up and it would be wrong. So, if Billy Bob dies and the quest is not completed, set the stage to 100, and then we've ended our if statement and event. So there you go. Save that. Is it all working? Yep, save succeeded. You can click X and click OK. Guys, that's our first bug fixed. Well done. Okay, so number two. What happens if we take the item from the enemy by pickpocketing instead of killing them? Well, the way we're going to do this is we're going to remove the objective of kill the bad guy if we pickpocket it from him. I'll explain this now because it does sound a bit confusing. So if we look in our quest stages, quest stage number 10 was Billy Bob has sent me on an adventure. And we set the objective display to 10. So let's look at the objective 10. It was kill the bad guy. Okay, that makes sense. But what happens if we don't kill the bad guy, which was stage 20, and we just go and get the weapon straight from him by pickpocketing? That What happens there is we skip 10 and go straight to 30. Uh, there's a little problem there, guys. We've just missed out 20. So how do we solve this problem? Uh, well, what we're going to do is we're going to click on stage 30 here, and we're going to add a little if statement. So click here and leave a line and at the top what you want what I want you to write is if and then we're going to use our little explanation mark again and then we're going to get get stage done because we want to check if the stage of 20 is done then on the next line we want to set objective displayed of 10 to false and now we want to end our if statement like we always do so what I've done here guys is if we have not completed stage 20, but obviously we're on stage 30, then I want you to set the objective of 10, which was kill the bad guy, to false. So it, remo it will remove the objective of kill the bad guy from the quest log if we just pickpocket instead. So that solves that problem of the, the never-ending, you know, uncompletable kill the bad guy uh, left in our quest log. So click compile. Yep, look, it's working fine, no errors. So that's compiled fine, and that means we've done that. So you're like, oh yay, we've done it. Well, not exactly. Click OK. Now we need to add a little bit of code onto the enemy. Why? Because what happens if we pickpocket, and we've gone to stage 30 straight away, and then we go and kill the bad guy. Remember, we've got that little bit of script on the bad guy saying to set the stage to 20. So what will happen is we'll pickpocket it, stage will be on 30, and then we'll kill the bad guy, and then the stage will be set back to 20, and we don't want that. So we add, we need a little bit of an if statement on the bad guy. So open them up. Open this enemy up. Give it a second. And you want to right click and edit the source. And simply what we're going to do is, under the event on death, you want to write if. Get your brackets out. If um, mod quest dot get stage is can't find the button there it is less than 30 and then at, underneath that you want to put end if remember because we need to um, end this off there we go basically what I've said is if the quest stage is less than 30 then you can go ahead like you normally do set the object to 20 and set the stage to 20 but if the stage is already at a 30 then don't do any of this stuff so that's basically fixed this bug now. We can save that out. Control S. Saving. Uh, it looks like we've done something wrong. Are we sure we want to save? No. Let's have a little look. Have we done something wrong, guys? Um, let's look through this. Yes, we have. I missed out a little vital uh, bracket, close bracket there. Do remember to do that. Don't make the same mistake as me. Let's try and save it again. Saving. Save succeeded. There we go. Click X. Now click OK. There we go, that is our second bug fixed. So we're moving through this quite quick guys. Let's go on to number three. So the third one was that we could go and kill the bad guy before accepting the quest. Now there's a few ways we can get around this bug, but the easiest way is to just, um, just disable the enemy until we've started the quest. So the enemy won't appear in game until we've accepted the quest. So how do we go about doing this? Well we need to go and find our enemy within the cell. So look for where you put your enemy. I believe I put mine in White Run Breeze Home. Uh, there it is. Now I'm going to scroll down uh, for my mod enemy. There they are. Right click them and edit. Now what you want to go and do is you want to tick the box down here that said initially disabled. 
Mine was already ticked because um, I'd done something earlier while I was testing this. But this should be unticked. And you want to go ahead and tick this box that says initially disabled. What this does is it makes sure that this actor, this enemy, is not in the game until we send a command through the game that says to, de to um, enable him. So it would be disabled starting. Click OK. That's all good. But we need to consider the quest feelings. The quest has no idea that we've just disabled that enemy. So how, how do we tell the quest that it's possible that this enemy is disabled? Well, we want to open our quest up. And we want to go over to the quest aliases tab. And we want to find our enemy. We want to right click them and click edit. I'll just give it a second because this takes a while. There we go. Now what you want to go and do is you want to go uh, to the top where these check boxes are. And look for the one that says allow disabled. Now this will basically allow the enemy to be disabled in the game. So you know the quest isn't constantly looking for this character. It knows that the character is disabled in the game. So once we've done that. That's all good. We can go and click OK out of this. Like that. There we go. And there you go. That is our... Um, actually, no, it's not. It's not our third bug fix. Why? You're probably thinking, why? Because we've got to add a little bit of script. Where? To stage 10. So let's go over to quest stages. Stage 10. And you're probably wondering why. Because we've not told the game to enable. We've not told the game to enable um, the enemy at all so the the enemy will not be enabled throughout the quest unless we tell it to so the way we do this is in stage 10 you want to go down and you want to add this little piece of code which i've already typed in i forgot to delete this guy sorry but um basically that shouldn't be there there we go it's gone so i'm going to type it up now for you again so your 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 script should look like this like um like it was in part four and you want to add this little piece of code so elias underscore enemy or this will be the name of your alias dot get reference have I spelled that right ref uh, no missing an a out there guys uh, then you want to get them brackets on dot enable brackets so but what we've said here is we want to get the reference of enemy and enable them so what will happen is when we've accepted the quest it'll change it to stage 10 it will Enable the enemy. Happy days. So there we go. We fixed bug number three. Sorry if that was a bit confusing then guys. I did forget to delete a bit of script while I was testing earlier. But um, if you just followed what I've done there. There you go. We've completed all three bugs. Oh wait no. There's one more. The fourth one. And this is actually the simplest bug to fix. What happens if the player loses the weapon? Well we're going to do something really easy. Make it so they can't. So what I want you to do is actually open up your mod quest again. And you want to go back to the quest alliances tab. And you want to look for your item. In my case the sword. Right click it. Edit. Give it a second to open up. Should only take a moment. Here we go. And you want to go to these check boxes again in the top right corner. And you want to select quest object. If you've ever um, done a quest in Skyrim where it doesn't let you drop an item because it says this is a quest object, this is basically what this checkbox does. So it won't let you lose the weapon, it won't let you drop it, but it also take away all the weight. So it won't like over encumbrate, is that the word? Over encumbrance? I don't know. It won't add any weight to the player. So, but you know, they won't lose it either. So if you tick this box, it will become a quest object. So let's click OK out of this. There we go. Click OK there. Guess what guys, that's all four bugs fixed. So I hope that was helpful and I hope um, you understood all that. If I talked a bit fast or I didn't get something through to you right, just comment below. Uh, but all this scripting code will be in the description as well. But um, I'm going to go in game now and I'm going to see if we have actually fixed the bugs. Do they work? So here we go. Okay guys, so here we are in the sleeping giant inn to meet our lovely friend Billy Bob. There he is. He's getting up, is he? Well, we're going to test out the first bug first of all, so let's start the quest to begin. What do you want? Well, I'm asking well, I'm you if you need my badass help. That's what I want. Of course, blah blah blah. Wait for it. There we go, the quest started. So what was that first bug? Oh yeah, we need to kill Billy Bob after we've accepted the quest to see if it fails. So sorry Billy, but it has to be done. Adios, my friend. See you later, alligator. Woohoo, you're dead, bitch. Look at that, lovely jubbly, we failed. I've never 
been happy to fail before, but I am now. So there you go, that's the first bug fixed. Shut up, Sven, you cock. Um, yeah, so that's the first bug fixed. Let's go and check out the second one now. Okay, guys, so here we are outside Bree's home, which is where I place my enemy. So yours will be where you place yours. Um, so let's go in and uh, test out bug number two, which was, can we pickpocket from the enemy instead of killing him? Um, and actually, I'd probably need a really good invisibility potion for this, so instead I'm just going to use this little command called T-Detect. And if you don't know what that does, it basically turns off AI detection, so it's as if I'm just like 100% invisible, and you know, they can't sense you at all, basically. So here we go. There's my enemy. Right there. A little badass there. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to pickpocket. So here we go. So I'm looking, and wait a second, the legendary sword isn't there. Well... I actually did this on purpose guys because I need to show you something because because well I gave my um, enemy a weapon that's what they stole because it was a really good weapon they actually equipped it so it's not actually possible for me to pickpocket this item but if you use a different item that you gave your enemy I don't know say you gave them a ring which they stole or they stole a, an ancient book or something that they wouldn't really equip then in this case I could pickpocket now and then I could show you that it removed from the quest log and all the stuff that we did to fix bug 2 is actually being fixed but I just can't show you today because I used an item which this enemy is equipping so technically guys uh, bug fix number 2 has been fixed it's just that I can't show you so let's move on to bug fix number 3 okay here we are to test bug fix number 3 which is, can we kill the bad guy before starting the quest? Um, I don't see him here. Is he here? Is he hiding around the back? He's not there. Is he upstairs? Let's see. Is he in my little shack room? Nope, nope. Oh, hey, Lydia, how you doing? Fold your arms at me. I don't think so, bitch. Um, nope, not in here. Yeah, it's weird, guys. The enemy is not here because I've not started the quest yet. So, yeah, that's bug fix number three. Working successfully. Well, hey. So let's test out number four. Okay guys, so I've just killed the enemy and I'm getting to the point where I can go and take the weapon back from them. Look how I killed him there, very nicely in his chair. Look at him, with his arm resting, oh, so lovely. Anyway, so I'm gonna go and get the weapon off him now. Legendary sword, look at that baby, oh my word. Let's pick it up, there we go, I've got the sword. So now let's see if it has been successfully turned into a quest object. We need to go into our inventory, uh, let's tap. Items, weapons, where's our legendary sword? There it is. Can we drop it? R to drop? No. Quest items cannot be removed from your inventory. Look at that. Working. Look, and it's got zero weight because it's a quest item. So, guys, we've successfully, you know, we've successfully fixed all of our bugs. So, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry again for the, the delay in this video. But, um, I'm glad you're here now watching. And I hope this has helped fix some little bugs that have been, um, causing you pain for some, quite some time if you want me to do part six please let me know uh, i think i might anyway though just to add a few extras like if we want billy bob to become our follower after we've done him a good deed you know because we've completed the quest he might want to be nice to us and be our follower we can also add little things like um you know when we walk up to him and his his voice is like an orc voice it's not actually the same as the voice files we could change that around if you want so if you if you want me to do a, a final extras part uh, please let me know but other ways otherwise you know um thanks for watching and remember to comment rate and you know just look at how lovely lydia's jiggly body is peace out guys bye bye